This problem asks you to construct a system which has only one periodic orbit and the trajectories are repelled from the orbit. Then it says plot the phase portrait of the system. You may use polar coordinates. So, yeah, this is from test 2A, the Friday one, spring 2017 at BME. So, basically what your plot is going to look like is something like one of these. This is a the general idea. You have one orbit and the things are going away from it. Uh, and these are just two basic examples. This is what you want to achieve. Now, how can we achieve this? Uh, it's not actually that hard if you're familiar with face portraits using polar coordinates. Uh, using X and Y it's a nightmare, so don't even try that. Uh, but let's just look at graphing face portraits using polar coordinates real quick. So, the basic idea is you're going to have some r prime equals something and theta prime equals something else. So, r prime, that just represents the rate of change of whatever your radius is. So of course, for, for polar coordinates, you, know, you have some radius and theta. That's going to determine uh, you know, where the point is on the graph. So, let's just go through a, a quick example. Say our prime was maybe, I don't know, 1 minus r, okay? And let's just say that theta prime equals 1. What would that look like? Well, it's, what you do is really similar to x and y. You just find uh, a 0 for r prime. Uh, theta prime isn't that important. All, all that theta prime is, is uh, basically the rotational speed. So this is rotational or orbital speed. And r prime, so basically the rotational speed, um, you can have an orbit, right? And that's going to be controlled by r prime. All that theta prime is going to tell you for that orbit is which way it's orbiting and how fast it's going. So uh, that's not really the tricky part for this problem. Uh, R prime is a little trickier, but it's still not that bad. R prime is the rate of change of the radius. So radius rate of change. And so we want that to be zero. Why do we want the radius rate of change to be zero? Well. If you have a radius, right, and it's the rate of change is zero, that means the radius is constant. So for whatever theta is, the radius is the same. What do you get? Uh, a circle. Um, unless you're at the, the origin, then it might not work out. So like for this one, we can sketch this pretty quickly. And then after that, we'll, we'll go through. I have a, an example that would solve the problem. Of course, there are an infinite number of solutions to this problem. but. Uh, so r prime here, to make that equal to 0, uh, you just pick r equals 1, right? And theta equals t. Uh, why theta equals t? Because d theta would equal 1. And then, yeah, that theta prime equals 1, that, that works out. So theta prime equals t, I think that's just basically saying it has a positive rotation. So uh, it'll, it'll be counterclockwise. So this phase portrait, uh, it's basically going to be you're going to have some circle here and with radius 1 and it'll be rotating counterclockwise. Now, when r prime is bigger than 1, what happens? Uh, well, let's say 1 minus 2. That's negative, right? So that means the radius is getting smaller. So solution should tend into this from the outside, okay? Things like that. Uh, and this is just an approximate sketch. You could use Mathematica or something like that to make something a little more beautiful. Uh, on the inside, what's happening? Uh, maybe for one half, well, it, that would be something positive, right? So uh, you, you're going to have solutions that are, are tending toward it, okay? And of course, this would be kind of zero here and zero here. Well, that, that turned into a royal mess. but you get the idea. This is all we're trying to do. Now, this circle, 
has kind of the wrong effect, right? Because everything is going towards the circle or towards the orbit. So basically, you need some type of... Um, I, I just did it with a third order. You want R prime to be something third order. And then you'll see that this orbit will become unstable and things will go away from it. So let's open up a new page. So what is something that would satisfy that? Uh, of course there are, like I said, an infinite number of solutions, but let's, let's pick something easy. Um, how about r prime equals maybe 4 minus r squared times negative r and then theta equals uh, I'm just gonna make life easy and say 1 okay, theta prime so that means it doesn't really matter what angle you're at it, the rate of change will always be 1 it'll always be uh, counterclockwise so let's find the zeros for r prime uh, 1 of course is at 0 right so you have one combination 0 and theta would be t that's the easier one. Then the other one at 2, and let's see. Yeah, theta would still just be t. So remember that that t is just telling you, right, if you took theta prime, derivative of t, you just get uh, 1. So 1 equals 1. Now, the first one, 0t, that's just the origin. So. Uh, this question doesn't ask you about the origin, but you know, we can look at the phase portrait and make some conclusions about it. However, uh, the other one, 2t, that means that you have a circle at 2. Now let's see what happens. Uh, so I'm going to draw a circle here, and I'm also going to write out this r prime. I'm just going to distribute the negative r and say that's minus 4r plus r cubed. Okay, so if you put a few values in here, you can understand what this is doing. Oh, and, and I guess I should just do the direction, right? T is positive, so also you can see theta prime is always positive 1. It'll be counterclockwise. So let's just look at the slope outside the circle and inside the circle, and that'll give us an idea of what the face portrait looks like. Uh, and just for sake of argument, let's do r of 2 and what would that get us? Uh, minus 4 times 2 is negative 8 plus 2 cubed, uh, you just get 0 which is good, That's that means we have a circle uh, and we're happy with that. Now how about something like 3? So r prime of 3 that's just gonna be what, minus 12 plus 27 which is positive, that means it's going away from the circle, so uh, at any point for the radius you're gonna have solutions going away which is what we want uh, so something like that so that satisfies the first criteria uh, we have trajectories that it's repelling these trajectories so uh, anything but right on that circle is going to be repelled away now let's look, look look at what it would be inside the circle. Um, I'll pick something simple like maybe 1 now. So instead of r of 3, we'll do r of 1, rather r prime of 1. And that's just minus 4 plus 1, so it's just minus 3. That means it's going inward, okay? So once again, away from the circle. So you have solutions kind of doing this, and I'm just assuming they go in toward the origin. You could do, and yeah, they should go into the origin. Actually, I think for this one, uh, it looks like you're just going to have an equilibrium point at the origin and the, uh, the solutions tending in toward it. So, this is a system that works, and your, you know, your face portrait would look something like this. I think if you didn't have to do it with kind of my, my jerry rig stylus, you could get a better picture than that. So, 
this is a solution that works. Uh, basically anything that's third order for R prime, or a lot of things that are third order for R prime would work. So what might be a physical example of something like this? Uh, and this is just, you know, you can stop watching now if you're not interested. But I thought of one. This is kind of a stupid example, but say you've got some shape like that, okay? It looks like that on the outside, uh, but there's a little... It's also, it's a bowl, right? Okay, really this should be a dotted line. Uh, and in here it would kind of be like your equilibrium point. So you could take some ball, and you know, this is a very skinny lip on the top, but if this thing is frictionless, right, and you roll this ball around, you're really good at, at rolling that ball around this cone. Um, there should be one point, and only one point there, where it's got just the right velocity. It should stay on the lip, you know, in a, a frictionless world. We'll say we have gravity, but, you know, your, uh, your centrifugal force is keeping it up on that lip. Now, if it goes a little too fast, right, it's going to run off here. If it goes a little too slow, it's going to go in and then eventually spiral until it gets to the equilibrium point. So that's pretty much it for this example. Uh, you're welcome to post any questions you might have in the comments. I'm going to post a, uh, a link in the comments that has another example. Just read to practice with, uh, what do you call it, um, face portraits for polar coordinates because then I, I can't really find any examples on YouTube of that so far. Okay, if you like the video, please subscribe. You're welcome to like it, tell your friends, and if you have any other videos you'd like for me to make, uh, just ask.